theyeshiva.net. Yeah, the Yerushalmi says in uh, Masechet Rosh Hashanah that on a Yom Aledes, on a birthday, Mazoli Goiver, the Mazel of a person prevails. So I want to use the opportunity to bless everybody that Hashem should fulfill all of your heart's desires, begashmis and beruchnis, whatever you need and whatever you want, for yourself and all of your loved ones and families and friends, but Yisrael, all the blessings, revealed goodness, of health and happiness, prosperity, nachas, menucha, serenity, simcha, and... Uh, a life overflowing with uh, tremendous bracha and atzlocha, ad blidai, both beklal and befrat, and that the <coughs> the light of, of Torah and the light of chassidus, the light of the Alter Rebbe, should be able to penetrate us with an emes, with a pnimius, that each one of us should be, be able to become an ambassador of light, an ambassador of love, an ambassador of hope, an ambassador of healing, and an ambassador of Redemption. L'chaim. L'chaim. You could say L'chaim on this, yeah? <laughs> Was the mix. Oh, oh, yeah. We could bring a juicer here in the morning and have juice together. Then you'll be the That's what you do anyway, say juicer. No, no, he's saying to have juice in the morning. We can have a juice. And, um, so, gates are good with us. Yeah, it's transparency. Transparency. Okay. Okay, I want to welcome all of the guests, all the regulars who are here, and all of the special guests who are gracing us here. Every person who uh, is here uh, virtually, physically and virtually, has a story, you know. And uh, we welcome all of the stories together. We're still on 84. <laughs> We're still on 84. <laughs> okay, so I hope everybody, yesterday's shear was a very important shear. MS? Yeah. Huh? Very important stuff. We explained, so if you didn't have a chance, you can hear it again or hear it for the first time on the yeshiva.net with the source sheets. And... Uh, Thank you, Reb Nochem, for uh, running the show. Thank you, Reb Isaac, for your wonderful work when Reb Nochem was in Israel. It was a very fundamental idea because uh, <coughs> we focused on the love that's Mamalik Alman, right? The love that comes from Mamalik Alman. And that was the whole shear, which in a crux, to summarize it, Mamish, in one sentence, is <laughs> the love of the ultimate self, the love of self, of the ultimate and truest self, the self really being, in its ultimate sense, the light of Hashem in this world, the manifestation of divine electricity that comes through you. That is what life really is. That's what your life really is. And the love of your life is already the love of Hashem. And the love of Hashem is the love of self, the real self. Love of God is the love of your true self. And the love of your true self is the love of God. There's, of course, not a true self, you know. There's the ego self. There's the fake self. There's the label self, there is the delusional self, there is the insecure self, and all the other selves. But all those selves are only necessary because I'm not in touch with that, that true self. So I need another self because I need some self to hold on to. If I don't have some self to hold on to, what's left? What's left of me? And when somebody doesn't have any self to hold on to, not the real one and not the fake one, that's when life sometimes becomes unbearable. Because I find no value in it and only pain, only pain in it. Huh? No, he's only out for someone else. 
What did you say? It's holding out to someone else. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think I shared once with you, I heard this from Dr. Tversky. We were in Boca Raton together for a Shabbos of recovery. There were a few hundred people there who are in recovery. You know, Boca Raton in Florida is a very uh, central place for recovery. So he was there for Shabbos, Rabbi Tversky, Rabbi Avram Tversky, the psychiatrist. And I was there for Shabbos. And we were, we were sitting together at the meal, schmoozing. And uh, he said something very powerful. He said, I asked him, or he said it in a speech, maybe I, whatever, this, but this is what I heard from him. He said that over 60 or 50, 60 years, around 50 or 60 years, that he's dealing with this as an MD, as a doctor, as a psychiatrist, as a therapist, as somebody who created a recovery center in Pittsburgh and been very involved in this, you know, in the years when it was not even uh, very common to speak about it, the 1960s. He said he learned such truth, and the truth was very powerful. And that is, and he said that most addicts that he's met are much more spiritual and much more sensitive than anybody else. And therefore they couldn't deal with the lies of a self and the lies of a world as other people may do. And they needed desperate measures and alternatives to be able to fill the void that comes from the tremendous emptiness, that comes from the tremendous pain of not feeling that true connection with who they really are. To put it in simple words, somebody who could become comfortable with... Lo Sometimes we look at a person, and I'm, I'm saying this, of course, with sensitivity, and I don't mean it as it may sound. Like sometimes you may... You know, it's a heavy shval ruach b'fnei kol It says in, in Pirkei Ovis, right? Be humble in front of every person. Be humble in front of it. Sometimes you look at two people. One person, a gestalte mensch. I don't know how you say that in English, a gestalte mensch. Um, not just a staff. Everything is put together about them. From the tie, right, to the watch. The knot is always, not like by me, the knot is always... Mom uh, uh, put together. Everything looks from the car to the watch, to the suit, to the hat, to the shoes, to the schedule... Everything. You look at another person, yeah? Nabucha junkie. Nothing is put together. Everything is chaos. At the surface, here's a success story. Here is a colossal failure. And on some levels, you know, practically speaking, there may be some truth to that. But sometimes it's the other way around. One person is much more superficial. Or one person could live much more comfortably with deception, with superficiality, with falsehood. It works. The game works for them. And others are very sensitive. That game doesn't work. And if they can't find a real, real connection with transcendence, they, uh, they end up in the abyss. The reason they're ending up in the abyss is not because of their lowliness. It's because of their greatness. And therefore, the substitutes that so many of us employ as good distractions don't work for them. That's what I heard from him. And why this is so important is because when I'm not aligned with my real self, I need substitutes. I always need substitutes. The question is how big, how dense, how fake... Or how real, if I'm aligned with my real self. So that's number one. That's, I, that's how I would summarize what we learned yesterday. Okay. Now we come to the next stage of love, which is called the love that's rooted in Saif of Kalam. What's the love that's rooted in Saif of Kalam? In other words, 
the Chayra, the first love that we spoke about is so much already. It's it's so good. It's so nice. It's 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 pleasant. It's powerful. It's healing, and that's true. It is healing, and it's and it's powerful, and it's and it's good. <laughs> and if you can really internalize that, this is uh, <laughs> not so bad. If you can really internalize that. But in the soul of the Jew, there's something deeper. And because there's something deeper, therefore, despite the tremendous depth and truth of the first love that we're talking about, it's still number one. It's step one. But there's a step two that's far deeper even. And that's what he calls the Ava, the love that stems from Sevev. Because how did we define Mamala Kalalman? if you recall, God as the engine of the universe, right? God as the self. It's the way the divine articulates himself as the oxygen of the cosmos. You got that? Don't worry, I also didn't. It just came out. But I don't think it's that bad. It's God how he articulates himself as the oxygen of, of the universe. Rebbe Avram, you want to give a, a mathematical equation for that? In other words, what we're saying is, what is Mamala Kalalman? It's the way that the divine energy becomes the source of life for every single being. Right, that's what Mamala Kalalman is. He fills... He fills the worlds and that becomes the true experience of every single being. A person is alive. You feel alive. There's something about your life that you feel, even if you don't understand it fully and you can't put your hands fully on it. But we cherish that. We cherish our breath. We cherish our kol haneshama, kol neshimo neshima. We cherish the heartbeat. We cherish the electricity of our body. We cherish the genes, the cell, the, the neurons firing every nanosecond. 100 billion neurons, we cherish that. And that every, every nivra, every being has a life. Those who are more conscious, those who are less conscious, those who are on the highest level of consciousness, those who are on the lowest level of consciousness from a revealed level. But everything has its source of life. And ultimately, that's the divine energy. The dvar Hashem, the ruach piv, as he puts it. The, the word of Hashem, shahakal niya bedvare. But what is it? It's the way Hashem articulates himself to become electricity of the universe. And as great as that is, right? And I think I once saw that the amount of electricity that comes uh, in two minutes from the sun to the earth, <laughs> from the sun, yeah, is more than the whole electricity that we generate combined in the, on the whole planet. So that's two minutes of the sun's electricity. So that's obviously awesome. It's infinite. It's, it's, incredibly, it's incredibly powerful. But we all understand that there's a tremendous tzimtzum in that. There's a tremendous restriction in that. God is defining himself and articulating himself as the electricity of the cosmos that suits, it's the voltage that suits the chemistry and character of every being. And even the highest, 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 most spiritual, lofty, Creation is still a creation with its own chemistry, with its own design, and therefore the voltage that goes into it, divine voltage, is very, very restricted. And that's what makes it mamale. Mamale means it has to fill it. If the electricity is overwhelming, you know what happens to the machine. The product burns up. So by definition, mamale kalalman is the way God becomes the self of every nivra. So that's tremendous. From my perspective, who am I? I am the divine. I am the energy of the divine. I am a conduit for the divine. But what aspect of the divine? As he puts it, it's like, the, it's like a letter. It's like a word that comes out of your mouth. <laughs> how, much electric, how much of the self is expressed in one word, in one breath? It's all me. It's like the ray of the sun. It's very important, the ray of the sun. It's very powerful. But how do you compare that to the sun itself? So it's tremendously restricted and condensed. 
In other words, the maila of this ava is also its chisarim. The maila of this ava is that it's, 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 it's me. <laughs> it's not separate from me. God and I are one. We're completely aligned. And that's its tremendous quality. It's tremendous power. Divine vibrations. Right. Vibrations. What do you mean? Mamale? It's divine as is, but that divine gave Torah mitzvahs. So it's not... uh... But you're right, uh, an animal doesn't have Torah mitzvahs. It has its program. (laughs) Shahakul niya bidvarin. Avada, that's mamalik alalman. Shahakul niya bidvarin. Shahakul niya bidvarin. I was davening in the other shul this morning in 18, so I went to the sink there to drink a cup of water. So I saw a sign by the coffee machine. In 18, I saw a sign. The fellow writes over there. He says, the minhag by Jews is that in the morning, in the morning you drink a coffee. He says, that's the minhag, at least around here, that a lot of people drink coffee in the morning. <laughs> he says, why? Why? So I always thought, I don't know, people like a coffee in the morning. It may wakes them up, makes them feel good, whatever it is. But the Bala sign, the author of the sign, it says as follows. He says, I'll tell you why. Coffee is black. The milk is white. The water is hot. The milk is cold. The sugar is sweet. The coffee is bitter. Okay. So you have black and white, hot and cold, bitter and sweet. And you put it all into one cup. And you say, this is our, the morning. This is how morning starts. There's moments that are bitter moments, that are sweet moments, that are black moments, that are white moments, that are cold moments, that are hot moments, that are sweet moments, that are bitter. But it's Baruch Atah Hashem Alekeinu Malachaylam Shahakol Niyah Bidvarei. Ganz gut, huh? Huh? No, I read it this morning. I read it. <laughs> I read it twice. So I could say it over. <laughs> Not bad. Adam Shlomi, you just missed a good word. Chaim on the coffee. It says, Come and Chaim of coffee. Now, I'm not saying that it's a biblical mitzvah to drink coffee in the morning. <laughs> I'm not telling you it's a rabbinic mitzvah. Adam brought green juice. And actually, it's more. This is closer to the source. <laughs> yeah, ginger, with garlic, with wheatgrass, with celery. It's also that. Okay. It was actually closer to the source, you know. So you could see more the bidvara. It's it, le- less tzimtzum. Less tzimtzum in green juice than in coffee with, uh, I don't put in sugar, but still. Who made the coffee? You? You. <laughs> uh, yeah, a Russian coffee this morning. Shahakal niya bidvara. So, Shahakal, everything, everything happened with his words. Everything comes into existence, Bidvara. That's why it's called Kave. Kave al Hashem. Kave in, in Yiddish is coffee. Kave al Hashem. We say at the end of davening, right? Kave al Hashem. Chazak v'yamitz lebecha. And then again, v'kave al Hashem. In Kaddish Kashem came biltech. So yeah, that's the truth of every of every nivra. That's the truth of every existence. But what makes it the truth of every existence is that it's the way the divine, or like the philosophers like to say, the Godhead articulates itself, compresses itself into becoming the engine of the universe, in becoming the vibrations that vibrate and vivify and pulsate through the entire cosmos, not just the physical one, as we put it, all the worlds, the spiritual worlds, the physical worlds, all the way down to the tiniest pebble 
and really tiniest atom, tiniest molecule, tiniest atom, and tiniest particle in, in, in our world. So on one hand, this love is, is everything. <laughs> but it's not, but what is it? It's a love to God, the way God becomes the self. That's what mamale means. And that's why he says it's, it's beruach piv kol tzvam. It's dvar Hashem. It's a ray. It's a word. It's an energy. There's an expression of the Balatanya Lekudot Torah and Shir Hashirim. Just a line. Lo zehu ikir ha'lekus masha ha'olamus mishavim mimenu. Translate. Very, very, very powerful line. Don't think that the primary aspect of godliness is that the worlds come from it. Don't define godliness by the fact that the worlds come from him. That's from the Chazal. Why he's called Hamakan. Similar. Right? He constitutes the space of the world, but the world doesn't constitute his space. That's a very important idea. He constitutes the space of the world. In other words, there's no I outside of the divine. But you can't sum up the divine by my electricity. <laughs> Just like nobody's going to say that you could sum up electricity in the world by my refrigerator. My refrigerator has no chios, uh, if you wish, no uh, electricity, no life energy outside of electricity. But you're not going to summarize, oh, the whole electricity that's available in reality is in my refrigerator. Thank God not. If the Niagara Falls would be in the refrigerator, it wouldn't really function well. And even the Niagara Falls doesn't sum it all up. So yeah, the refrigerator got no life outside of electricity. But electricity got a life outside of the refrigerator. Who <laughs> This was one of the major differences. The Baal Shem Tev has an expression when the Baal Shem Tev used to say, "Gut is alts and alts is gut." Hashem is everything and everything is Hashem. So those who didn't understand confused it, Lahavdil, with pan pantheism. Spinoza, who lived in the 17th century in Amsterdam, was a Jewish boy. His name was Baruch, Baruchel. <laughs> And later went his own way. If you visit Amsterdam, the shul, you could still see the original cherim, the excommunication on the wall, the original cherim, they banned him. So he's very well known as uh, the initiator of the idea of pantheism, which equates God with nature and nature with God. Oh, God is alt, God is everything. But it's really the exact opposite. What the Baal Shem Tov was teaching, based on the Chazal, based on the Kabbalah, based on the on various madrashim, is that there's no nature outside of the divine. Not that there's no divine outside of nature. So there's no I outside of that electricity. But you can't sum, sum up the sun by the ray. There's no ray outside of the sun. The ray is from the sun. It's not a new, it's not a new reality. But, you, but you're not going to define the sun by the ray. So the Ava of Mamala Kalalman, the Ava in Mamala is the Ava to the ultimate self, the way the divine translates into the self, which is a tremendous, tremendous symptom, a tremendous restriction. Because it's the way that the chemistry of every being can make, contain the divine energy, and that's what defines it. So by definition, it's suited and it's custom-made and it's tailor-made to the very function, design, purpose, utility, physical and spiritual of that created being. I'm being clear. It's clear. You could look it up. It's called Panthea. Whatever this was, his shit. Uh, was, uh... No. Bechlal not. Mitzad mamale kalama without soiviv, a person could come to that mistake. Mitzad mamale kalama without soiviv, a person could come make that error. Even without soiviv, or 
big limitation. Right, it's a whole different idea. That's what the Gemara, the Chazal are saying. Hu shel oilam ve'ein ha'olam He constitutes the space of the world, but the world doesn't constitute his space. The whole space of the world, space doesn't only mean space. Space means every aspect of the world is him. <laughs> he constitutes the space of the world, but the world doesn't constitute his space. There's no world outside of him, but you can't say that there's no him outside of the world. The Ava, to save of the Ava that comes from Save of Kalaman is a whole deeper story. I'm saying deeper as though the first one is not deep, but it's a whole different Mahalach. Save of Kalaman represents the divine truth the way it is, unadulterated. We said the Lashon of the Balatanya, Loizo Ikirel Lakus Mashailam is Mesavim Ameno. Don't define godliness by the fact that the world comes from it. It's interesting. There's different terms people use for Hashem. One of the very famous terms is Rebbeinu Shalolam. The Rebbeinu Shalolam. What's Rebbeinu Shalolam? The master of the world. The master of the world is a term for us, not for him. <laughs> you understand? That's what he's saying. It's the way we describe it. It's not, it's not a term for him. In terms of him, it's only Ruach Piv. <laughs> it's like I'll define the sun by the fact that you want to know what the sun is? Look, my house is light. <laughs> it's true, my house is light from the sun, but that's, that's a story about me. It's not a story about the sun. For me, that's everything. Look at the sun. For the sun, it's Kama ray, a little ray. It's Dvar Hashem, Ruach Piv. The Gemara says in Menachas, the whole Elam Hazah was created with a hay. So it's a hay. So I want to know how much voltage of the entire self exists in the letter hay. Ha! Ha! Hevel, my breath. Ha! Hey! No, what did you just get from me? Okay, my hay is not God's hay. <laughs> my hay is not Hashtag Hevel. But what do they say? Uh, a butterfly uh, flaps its wings here and <laughs> tornadoes are created there. Every breath has a power. Every breath has an energy. So that breath means everything because that breath is the electricity <laughs> of the entire cosmos. That's big. In that little point, prebiotic soup, in which the Big Bang happens, all the electricity is there. And a, if you just want to use, I'm just using that terminology. And then there's an explosion that it expands, and a universe is formed. Or you want to use the language of the Ramban and Beratius. He uses that language, the Ramban, in the, in the 1200s, that the whole universe started as a, a tiny, tiny point, a tiny Nakuda. This is the Ramban in the 1200s. Okay, the Big Bang, uh, I think, emerged in the 1920s, right? The 60s. That's when they heard the vibrations and so forth. It starts as a little, little point. That's what he says. A mamash, a tiny nekud of ayin. And, and it develops. In that point, you have everything. Everything. And the power and the intensity of that and the momentum of that is, is unfathomable. But all of that, Chazal described as the letter He. Or as he puts it here, ruach piv, the breath of his mouth. So it's a vibe. It's a divine vibe. That's where the word vibe comes. The world is a divine vibe. And when you're in touch with the real world, you're always in touch with the divine vibes. There's a good vibe. Shahakal niya bidvara. But ribayna shalaylam is a description of us more than of anything else. It's the way you're defining Hashem as the source of the electricity of the cosmos. Now that's impressive stuff. But it's like defining electricity in terms of your refrigerator or your vacuum cleaner. 
The whole Mamala Kalalman is the way godliness restricts itself and articulates itself and compresses itself and condenses itself to become the oxygen, the fuel, the electricity, the vibrations, the vitality, the chius of the universes. Saiv of Kalalman represents that which is Saiv. Saiv means it surrounds the world. What does it mean, surround? Surrounds doesn't mean in space. It's around the building, it's not inside the building. It means it's not condensed into the parameters of the particular nivra. Mamala Kalalman is all about ex- conscious experience. It's about creating the I that I'm experiencing, and that's why it's always fitted to the keli, to the vessel. I can't pour more water than this can contain. Because you can only deal with a particular voltage. If not, you won't be you. You're going to burn up the machine. You're going to destroy the machine. Every malach has its chiyos and every soul has its chiyos. And doimim tzimeya, chayim medaber, diswatzil is bri, yitzirasiya. A rock to a pebble to a blade of grass to an insect to a reptile to a bird to a fish to a mammal to a mammoth to a human being, to a galaxy, to a black hole. I don't know bigger stuff, sorry. Huh? No, no. I'm not saying God. <laughs> I'm talking about the kalim, the vessels. We call it soiviv, not because it's not inside. <laughs> it's inside like it's outside. But it's not condensed, it's not limited. It's the unadulterated truth of Hashem, so to speak. No, set to the shmai is in everything. No, soiv of kol alman b'shava. Every keli has the same exact relationship to it because it's not limited to the experience. If it's limited to the experience of the keli. You can't compare, you know, in the back of the laptops, they tell you how much voltage it can take, right? To uh, 220, 110, right? In the olden days, when the wires only had one, you remember you put in the wrong wire, you went to Israel, you put in the wrong wire, and that was it. You could say Kaddish on your computer. I did it once. Today, they already, uh, you know, they have all the, it already adopts it. Transformers, right. So they have, most machines already have it. Because it has to suit. It has to suit this particular vessel. This cup is eight ounces. I can have eight ounces of water. I have a gallon. I can put in a gallon. It always has to, and that's the definition of mamali. The definition of mamali is what makes you here that I get you. <laughs> in Saiviv, it's completely not defined by the keli. His presence is everywhere and everything on its terms, and it's infinite. And there's no place that's devoid of it. So, essentially, and again, let's, let's not take this in simple terms. The relationship with Hashem in terms of Mamala Kalalman, relative to Soiviv, is called spiritual selfishness. What do I mean spiritual selfishness? It's the way that I'm finding my ultimate expression. I'm finding myself in the truth. But the focus is always on that I. And therefore, I have to dumb down the energy. Because what allows for the I to experience it is that the energy is dumbed down. The Ava of Soiv of Kalalman is... Like the Alter Rebbe used to say, "Ich will nish dain elam hazeh, ich will nish dain elam habe, ich will nish gan eid ne'elyin, ich will nish gan eid natachten, ich will dir, ich will manage das dich alein." I want you. I want you. You means I want you on your terms, not the way you're defined by me, and you come into me, and you make me comfortable, and you give me my ultimate realization. Not that we're knocking the first, it's not, it's not, you know, black and white here, like coffee and milk. <laughs> but it's, it's the depth of a neshama. Now, the Rebbe has an expression in a mimer on Pesach, <laughs> how he puts it, as I. He says, to be typhus mamala kalalman, he says, 
Not for this did the Nefesh Elikis come down into the world. This even a good guy can be typhus. <laughs> He says, not for this did the Nefesh kiss come down into the world. He says, this a good Gentile can grasp also. Somebody who's really open and spiritually honest understands that the whole world is divine. He says, the Nefesh kiss, the godly soul came into the world to give the world a taste of soiv of Kalam. <laughs> taste of truth, of the ultimate truth. Truth here, we don't mean truth versus falsehood. Mamali is as true as anything else. Truth we mean the ultimate truth that is not defined by my experience of truth, but rather my experience of truth is defined by it. You're looking at me like I'm a little Kmashuga or confused, bewildered. It's really one. We're talking about our experience. In our experience, we have to have a theory. When we sp say these terms, it's not like Chas V'Shalom, there's two. Hashem Echad. We speak Mamali and Soiviv to dis define our experience of it. It's not like Mamali is in the cup and Soiviv is outside of the cup. It's really one. But by definition, Mamali is the way I define God. How do I define God? The way I define I. And that's infinite, trust me. How much of the I do we know? <laughs> we don't even understand one cell. And there's 40 trillion of them. How much of that you can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper? Because that itself is ain't safe. And that's why there's endless worlds. It says, this ain't soif madregas. Talmidi chachamim, the Gemara says in Brachas, ein lam menucha, loi boi lam haza, loi boi lam haba, shenemar, yeilchu mechayel el chal yerala lakim betzia. And that's how Masechus Brachas ends. Talmidi chachamim have no menucha, no tranquility, not in this world, not in the next world. That's, that, that's, that's a nice way to end the Gemara. <laughs> People think one day you retire, you have menucha. If not here, there. No, you don't get it. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's what that's what mamale means. Mamale means it's the ray of the sun that I'm enjoying and experiencing, and it's true. It's true, and it's very true. I'm, I I enjoy the sun very morning. I don't have a muscle here because this is blocked and this is a, a bad position. But just imagine, you know, the huge windows, and we're sitting here, and the rays are coming in, and and you. And as you're looking at me, you can see the rays of the sun being reflected, right? You understand my point? <laughs> okay. Electricity. Can, can you say what is so called almond? You can only describe it in what? So the way the Alter Rebbe says it is, <clears throat> don't define godliness by the fact that the world comes from him. What do you mean don't define him? We always say, the Halekim Bashefer. It's true he's the creator, but that's, you're talking about yourself more than about him. They say that Mendel Haradaker was, uh, he wrote a sefer called Pri Haaretz. He was a student of the Magid. He's sometimes called Mendel of Vitebsk, Reb Menachem Mendel of Vitebsk. But as the Magid passed away, so for a few years the Balatanya became his Talmud. He used to go to him. So they once, uh, this is a story they say. I think I read it from Rav Shlomo Yosef Zevin. I read it many years ago that his students once said, Rebbe, can you show us a tzaddik nister? We want to see a concealed tzaddik. So he says, me, ich bin a tzaddik nister. They said, Rebbe, you're not concealed. We all know, we all know you, and we know you're a tzaddik. So he said, does I? Achun vei. Woe unto me if my tzaddik status was as much as you know it. You understand what he's saying? Now the way I define a tzaddik, I'm talking about me, I'm not talking about him. Generally speaking, they say, right, psychologists love to say, and there's a truth to it. When somebody is speaking about you, they're usually not speaking about you. They're speaking about themselves. <laughs> How 
How, I can't speak about you. I speak about you from my perspective. You, the whole you I know is me. <laughs> How do I know you? How do I know you? I know you. And that's why you have to be so humble in judging others because it's always based on my paradigms and my own experiences and my own insecurities. Sometimes a person triggers me and I go crazy from them. It has to do with them. It has to do with me. Completely do with me. This doesn't mean that they're perfect and they're saintly and they're righteous. But it means when somebody is speaking about you, more than you, when, when I hear somebody speaking about somebody else, especially a great person, yeah, I always think to myself, this person is not telling me about the great person. They're telling me about who they are. That's what you're saying. All you're telling me is who you are. You're not telling me. Even if you're, even if you're authentic, I'm not talking about if you're making Baba Mises. Even if you're authentic, you're describing. Of course, the men live at Tepsk is a tzaddik. And who's the maven on what a tzaddik is? <laughs> who's the expert on a tzaddik? You. You decided what a tzaddik is. He fits it. So he says, Rabbi Sai, I'm not that tzaddik. I'm a tzaddik nister. <laughs> you really don't know about me. That's the difference of Mamalik Alman and Sebu Kalam. Mamalik Alman is, I'm defining you based on me. <laughs> because the you, in this case, the you has become me. From my own life force, as he says, I love my life, I love Hashem. Because it's the same thing. Soiviv is that the soul is rooted in the ultimate truth. So it's not, I love, the love of Hashem is the love of self. It's a love that transcends even the self. And from here comes the secret of the Jewish people. And the difference between the two, of course, is one is based on my conscious experience and one is never based on my conscious experience and therefore it could never cease, it could never change. It could be conscious, but it's a different type of consciousness. Mamali is defined by my experience of it. What makes it here? What makes Mamali here? That it fills me, that it defines me. And I define it. It's based on the keli. We'll give an example. If a teacher is teaching and the idea is understood by the student. So now you could say the student goes away with this idea in his mind. He could think about it. He can share it with others. He can write it. It can inspire him, etc. What happens if the teacher is teaching and the student doesn't understand the idea? So... Could you say the idea is in the student? No. Not that Seichel has a space, but it lives in the world of intellect. And if I don't understand it, this intellect has not arrived into my space. Sometimes you're sitting at a shear, right? And it just doesn't go in. So it did not go into me. What means it went into me? I got it. I got it. And then when you start smiling. Because I got it. That's all the definition of mamale. What makes it here is that I experience it, that I feel it, that it became part of me. If it's not part of me, if I don't feel it, then it's not the union of mamale. It's not here. It's not my experience. But soiviv is completely a different reality. It is here in its unadulterated truth. Notwithstanding my experience. You know it, it becomes knowledge. Yeah. That's why it always changes. What was yesterday's soiviv is today's mamale. What is today's soiviv becomes tomorrow's mamale. They once asked the brisker of. It's a brisker of art, but you'll soon see how it works. They asked him if a Mashiach comes, there's going to be a Muna. When Mashiach comes, will there be a Muna? Apparently not, right? A Muna means belief. You don't have to believe that uh, that there's a cup of coffee here. <laughs> you could see it. V'niglik v'yadashem. So the briskerov answered like a briskerov. He said, a Muna is a mitzvah. <laughs> and mitzvahs don't change. Hatayra hazois loyta he one of the 13 principles. A mitzvah doesn't change. A mun is a mitzvah. A mitzvah doesn't change. Mashiach. It's a brisk of art. 
You hear the word? A moon is a mitzvah, and a mitzvah doesn't say. What's pshat? <laughs> so for the brisker of this, such a word passed. So in the Kutatoy, the Parshas Veschan, and the Balatanya says this. And he says, what was today's emunah becomes tomorrow's knowledge. What is tomorrow's emunah becomes the knowledge the next day. What is today emunah when Mashiach comes is knowledge. And there's another emunah because you're dealing with absolute infinity. You understand? So will there be emunah? Then of course there'll be emunah. A completely different type of emunah because today's soiviv becomes tomorrow's mamale. Just like when people grow up. What for one person is completely beyond, another person grasps and is comfortable with. We all know, even sitting here in this shear, right? Every person is, comes from their own experience. What one person, what for one person is 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 reality, but another person doesn't know. What are you talking about? What do you want? Was willst du? And so it goes. You have to. Expand and expand and expand. In neuroscience, they call it creating new neural pathways. New ways of thinking, new neural pathways. What was yesterday's mystery becomes today's reality and so forth. When a person has that humility... You don't relate, you don't have to relate to Soiviv. Soiviv relates to you. <laughs> you don't have to relate to it, it relates to you. You think you're finite. <laughs> you're finite because you think you're finite. That's what Mamali does. <laughs> you're typhus. You're finite because you think you're finite. That's what the Malikal Alman does. God allows you and me to think that we're finite. <laughs> if there wouldn't be Mamale, what would you and I know? That we're infinite. If I think I'm infinite, how does it yeah, if you think you're infinite, you're infinite. Try it. Don't try it at home. <laughs> All reality is based on consciousness. All reality is based on consciousness. Doesn't mean it's a lie. God allowed for that consciousness. He wants a dir b'tachdonim. He wants us to be in a world of consciousness, in a world of finiteness, not in a world of infinity. Is it a point where, when, when, it's, it's so when we try to find it, it actually finds us? Yeah. That's the yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, I was once in Yerushalayim, I met over there a Jew, a mystic. Meir Abisera was his name. Meir Abu Chatzera. Allah Shalom. So he tells me, you know the difference between Jerusalem and the rest of the world? He says, in the rest of the world, you pursue meaning, and in Jerusalem, meaning pursues you. The Ava, the Ava of Seiv of Kalalman is the essence of, a, of, of the Jewish experience. The Anim Zmiris Vishirim Ereg, Ki e Lecha Nafshi Sareg, Nafshi Chomda Betzel Yadachal Adas Kol Rosay Dacha. Yeah. You know the story behind this niggin? Huh? The Lubavitch Rebbe used to teach on niggin Simchas Teda every, every Simchas Teda at dawn, around five o'clock in the morning. He would come down, he would teach a niggin. One year he taught the niggin Anim Zmiris. Before he would teach the niggin, he would tell the background of the song. The story behind it. Because every niggin has a story. So when he taught the niggin Anim Zmiris, you know the niggin, yeah? Anim Zmiris V'shidim so before the Lubavitcher Rebbe taught the Nigan, he shared the story that the, it says it says in Shulchan Aruch 
that the day after Yom Kippur, Noihagin Lahashkem, it's a minik to come early to Shul. <laughs> to come earlier to Shul to Davin Shachras. So it was the day after Yom Kippur, and they came to a Shul to Davin early in the morning, the next day. And they come into Shul, and there's a Jew. <laughs> And the Jew is with his cup, with his uh, kittel and his talus over his head. And he's singing this nigga in Anam's Midas, Rashid Amerik. And they realized he never went home, Mitzah Yim Kippur. Why? Because the ecstasy of Ne'ilah was so powerful, he couldn't leave. He didn't want to leave. He didn't want to leave. So he was... It's a chvadveikit. He went into a dveikis and he st- stood there all night, Mitzahim Kippur. And when they came in the morning, he was singing this niggin. It's like a chosin and a kala don't want to leave the yichud room. <laughs> yeah, Yim Kippur is like the chuppah. Ne'ilah is like the yichud room. The door closes and you're inside. Right? And even the photographer has to leave. And then there's always somebody banging, no, 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 pictures, pictures. There's a reason we're paying $70,000 for the wedding, not you should be stuck in the Yichud room. You'll have a whole life for that, hopefully. So Ne'il is like the Yichud, he doesn't want to come out. I'm not, I, don't, I don't have to take pictures. <laughs> That's just my marshal. So what, what's the Nikud of this? There's two types of love. There's a love that's based on the self. I love you because because of what you do for me, how you enrich me. In this case, it's not just you enrich me, you are me. (laughs) The love of God comes from the love of self. It is the love of the ultimate self. But there's a whole different ava, a whole different, a different deep ava. And that's the Anim Zmiris, Rashidim Eric, Kielecha Nafshi Sarek. That there's something in the Jewish soul that is rooted in the ultimate essence that is beyond the Dvar Hashem that creates the world. It's beyond the vibe of electricity that restricts itself to come into the world. I'm not looking to you to find myself. I'm looking to you even if that means I completely melt away in yourself. I don't have to find myself in you. I'm not looking for a madrege, for a shlemus, for, for another checkpoint on my chart. I'm not looking even for inspiration. <laughs> I'm not looking for inspiration. I'm looking for truth. I want you. Really? But if you want me, if you want you, you know the electricity voltage there is very, very big. It doesn't sit well with your spiritual ego. I don't care. Not because of recklessness, because of carelessness. On the contrary, there's, there's a yearning for ultimate intimacy with ultimate truth in which you completely lose yourself. And this is, this is the experience of the Ava that's rooted in Saiv of Kalal. And this is part of the violin of the soul. This is part of the music of the violin of a Jewish soul. Maybe you have to sing in order to understand this. <laughs> I think you have to sing, yeah? yeah. Nafshi chamado b'tzel yodecho v'olodas Your 
So, <laughs> back to words again. From Saivav to Bamalev, how Bamalev to Saivav. But it's really a pen. It, 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 oopsie. Almost Saivav. It's really, it's really a pendulum. Is that the word? Uh, pendulum. Pendulum. <laughs> Pendulum. Uh, in other words, the Avas Hashem of Mamale is the search for the ultimate self. And that's a beautiful thing, right? People say, I'm searching for myself. Right? It's a big word. When you're 19, you're supposed to look for yourself. When you're 49, you realize you're lost. <laughs> When you're 69, yeah, you what happens family. then? You yeah. But the search for self, the search for self. Now, it's a noble thing, the search for self. It happened when God said, Ayeka, where are you? And Adam said, good question. <laughs> and since then, we've been in therapy. I mean, more or less, God says, where are you? He didn't ask anybody else. Why couldn't he ask a tiger, where are you? Or a cat? He asked a person, and we said, I'm not sure. <laughs> That's really what happened. It's not Pasha. This is serious stuff. They ate from the tree of Das, right? The tree of Das. Where are you? I don't know. <laughs> God says, you must have eaten from the Eitz Das. Ah, shine. And now you're self-conscious. Every animal is fine being without clothes. We? Oh, no, no, no. I need to get dressed. <laughs> what happened? It's a whole different, I'm trying to find myself. I'm not comfortable. If I would be comfortable with myself, like my two-year-old baby, he doesn't have to get dressed. We get him dressed, but he's fine running around the dining room without anything. Kiyodua. And everybody says, so cute. But when you're 14, when your 14-year-old does that, you're in a crisis. You're calling every expert in the world. What should I do? Right? You don't know what to do. You want to shoot him. Because it's already post eight Hadas. <laughs> You're two years old, it's pre eight Hadas. So that search for self always comes because there's a little bit of alienation. Alienation. I don't know who I am, so I'm searching for myself. So, and in that search for self, you discover, when you can discover your alignment with the divine, that's a very, very powerful. And that itself grows and grows and grows because Mamali is also infinite. But it's the search for perfection. It's the search for self-realization. It's the search for self-actualization. It's the search for alignment. And that's one of the most noble searches in the world. But that's not the ultimate experience of Yiddishkeit. The ultimate experience of Yiddishkeit is what it says after Matan Torah, The first mitzvah after Matan Torah was what? Right after, what's the first thing it says, you know? Build an altar of earth. And you'll slaughter on it your offerings of oilus and shlomim. So the Balatanya once said, why is that the first mitzvah after Matan Torah? I'll say it in Yiddish and then I'll translate. So the first thing Hashem says after Matan Torah is, So it's boyin mizbeach from bitl. Un avdem mizbeach zos te shechten ala aliyos. On Allah Shleimason. Build an altar of Adam of earth, of Bittel. And on that altar you should slaughter your need to go higher and you need to be perfect. Vizavachta love Eloi Secha from the word Aliyah and Shleimus. A person, I want, I want Aliyas, I want Madregas, I want Shleimus. I want perfection, I want ultimate perfection, I want Shleimus. Spiritual perfection. That's all in the Ava of Mamale. I'm looking for my ultimate self. The Ava of Saiviv is. I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for the ultimate truth. 
And I want to melt in that ultimate truth. I want to melt. I don't want to experience it in the self. Because I know that what I experience in the self is always... Is always... Uh, convoluted. Convoluted. Tainted. Condensed. I want, I want everything. And not I want it because I want it so I can come back and say, you, you know where I was? <laughs> <laughs> That's not the word. I'm using the word I want because I have no other word. But it's 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 the natural yearning, the elecha nafshi saroig. Huh? It's 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 the it's it's because that's who you really are. It's because you saw all over machshava, because the neshama is deeper than dibur. And that's the oymik of the Alter Rebbe when he says the world comes from dibur. And the Gemed which says, you saw all over machshava. I don't come from your dibur, I come from your machshava. What's the difference of speech and thought? Speech is for everybody else. Thought is you yourself. Thought is you. Speech is what we all hear. You speak, I know. When, when you speak, it's for communication. It's already channeling the energy, condensing the energy. Thought is you yourself. The whole universe has a relationship with speech. It's the vibe of speech. It's the energy of memale. Ruach piv, right? It's the communication of the divine. That's why we call the world God's speech. What's a speech? The worst thing you can do at a speech is get up and not be prepared. Unless you know how to not be prepared. But that itself you have to prepare for. What I mean, you see you get, people get up and start rambling. No, you have to prepare for your audience. If you're speaking to children, you have to, if you're speaking to adults, this crowd, you have to know your audience. Why? Because that's what communication is. Communication is not about me. It's about you. I know this class was different, but... <laughs> but communication is about the audience, not about the speaker. That's what it is. And if you don't know about the audience, then you're not communicating. Dibur, by, the, by definition, is tzimtzum. It's not about complete self-expression. It's about communicating that in a way that a person, not that it's dishonest, even if it's very honest, but it, you want to affect the other person. Machshava is your intimate self. So those are the two loves. The first one is always conscious. That's what its definition is. It's, it's my, my consciousness. It's my, my life, my sense of life. The second Ava is, never changes. It's not like if your consciousness seizes, it's not there. How does that relate to that? In other words, after, after the Gili of Matan Taira, what's the result? That you could check your Shlemus. What does this mean in the void of a person? What does it mean in the void of a person, practically? Just one practical example would be, I'll talk about a child, it'll be easier to understand. Sometimes, you meet a child, whether it's your own or somebody else. When it's your own, it's harder, obviously. The child is struggling with a lot of stuff. If you look at this child, what's the hardest thing for so many people to do? The hardest thing for so many people to do is to step away from their own paradigms of how things are supposed to look. You have a child struggling, let's say. Your own child or a child who's close to you, a teenager, whatever it is, a boy, a girl. And you need drastic measures in order to save this child, to help this child. But it's so hard for me, it's so hard for you to go out of my paradigm how this child has to be. So I keep, or we keep on going back into that bubble from which we operate. This is how you do it. If yes, good. If not, leave the house, leave the system, leave the community. I you losing this child, but I cannot graduate I cannot transcend my understanding of what Judaism is and what God is. And not because I'm a bad person. Maybe because I'm actually a very good person. And this is what I was trained. This is morality. This is ethics. This is what God wants. This is the right thing. This is the right thing to do. 
But sometimes there comes a moment where you have to break the luchas. What was the mysterious nefesh of breaking the luchas, you think? For Moshe, there was nothing more precious than the luchas. Why? Because it's, it's God himself. <laughs> Nobody understood the value of the luchas more than Moshe. And he's the one who broke them. What did he break at that moment? He didn't break two stone of tablets. He broke everything. He broke everything he understood about God. Why? To save the Jewish people. That's a different type of relationship. That's a different type of Ahava. You're ready to break everything you knew about your own spiritual self for a truth in which you're not going to find yourself. But that's what real love is. That's what real connection is. And it's not an easy thing. Anybody relates to what I'm talking about? Huh? Not an easy thing. Now, this is not done with hefkeris and anarchy because I'm in the mood of breaking luchas. Then, uh, then it's not kosher. It has to... Huh? Rashi says that Moshe broke the luchas because it was the ksuva. The luchas was the marriage contract. So Moshe says there's no marriage contract. They're not married to you. <laughs> there's no adultery. Rashi says in Parshish Kisisa. Tidoin kipnuye veloy ish. The Jews are not married. So he takes kivayochel, luchas, which is kivayochel Hashem himself, anon nafshik sovis yehovis, anoichi the Gemara says, Hashem's essence is in the luchas, and that's what he breaks. But that was also for God. That was also for God. Because the Tanah Deve Leo says that a uh, Yid asked a Leo Anavi, he says, I love two things, Torah and the Jewish people. Which one comes before, which one comes first? So Leo Anavi said, Tanah Deve Leo Perik Yudalad. Tanah Deve Leo Rabbi Perik Yudalad. So the, the Leo Anavi said, the whole world says that the Torah comes first. Vani Oimer Yisrael Kadmo. And I say that the Jews come first. So the Leo Anavi told them. So now the question was, the Tluchas can survive and the Jews will die. Or the Tluchas can break and the Jew will live. So Moshe breaks the Tluchas. So you would think Hashem would be upset. Hashem says, Thank you for breaking the Tluchas. And that's the last words of Rashi and Torah. You finish, we want to finish with something positive. The end is with this Horrible catastrophe. Because this brought out Moshe Rabbeinu more than anything else. He was never connected to truth on his own terms. He was connected to truth. And when you're connected to truth, then sometimes you could shatter the whole spirituality that you have practiced for 60 years. Now this doesn't come easy. This comes with tears. It doesn't come, if it's Efkeid Estam, then Estam you're a let. We're not talking about Epsal let's. A light-headed person. A Kal Shabakalim who doesn't <laughs> break the luchas, doesn't break the luchas. Who cares? <laughs> We're not talking about that. Don't, don't, mistake, don't confuse the two. This comes from a deeper, a deeper connection, not from a smaller connection. But I'm giving an example. Sometimes you look at a situation. Everything you knew has to go into the dustbin. What, what motivates you to do it? What allows you to do that? What, what you have to have at that moment is the ability to transcend the self. The ability to transcend the spiritual self. And that's not easy for people. And I'm talking here not about, you have narcissistic, clueless people who don't care about anything. I'm talking about people who care. But what do you mean? This, this is the God I know. This is the God I'm comfortable with. But you're going to lose your child. You're going to lose your child. You're going to sit. You're a lifeguard. You know the lifeguard seats by the beach. They sit uh, on an ivory tower. Right a half a mile up there. And the kid is drowning. She said, you want me to go down there? Russia? I stay up here. You, you'll stay up there with God, but he's going to drown. I have to stay up. Let him come up to me. <laughs> Tell him to come up to me. He can't come up to you. He's drowning. 
No, nope, I don't go down. I stay here. I'm not, there are people who are Pashat narcissists. They don't get it. We have plenty of that too. They don't get But I'm talking about people who are motivated by what they understand is genuine religion. Because it's my way of experiencing Hashem. But there comes a moment where you have to say, it's not about your experience. It's about what truth. And that's not always something that's going to be in your experience. You have to get off the ivory tower and jump into places where you're going to have to take off your clothes and feel naked and go into the quicksand and get dirty in order to save the child. That's why I'm here, so you can That's the real reason. That's the real reason you're up there. I'm just trying to, I'm, I'm just giving one application with, the, with, with these concepts come into play in people's lives. If Yiddishkeit always remains ultimately an exercise in, ah? Uh, but I'm talking here in, Edel, in very Edel of Madregas, because Mamali is nisht, uh, Mamali is very deep. But it's ultimately the way I feel, the connection. I want to feel, I'm not going to feel a relationship here. So you won't feel a relationship, so what? Real spirituality doesn't have to feel spiritual. <laughs> real, real godliness doesn't have to feel spiritual. It could feel physical. Memale, what makes it godly is that I feel that it's godly. I feel that it's holy. Soiviv, what makes it godly is that it's true, it's divine. So you don't feel that it's divine, so what? But it's true. But I'm not going to feel ruchnius, so you won't feel ruchnius. But you'll do the right thing. The avek leg, that's the mizbeach adama. It's not about your aliyas, your shleimus. Okay. Sure. The litmus test is two things. Number one, the results. But you could see, you could see results. That's number one. Number two, number two, number two, it's always if. Yeah, that it's not. There's the mamale is God as the self, and here it's not about the self. It's about the truth. It's not about the self. We're in Taita. You want to know? Well, Moshe breaks the luchas and Hashem says, Yeshekoicha, Yeshekoicha, Choshen Shibarta. Thank you. Yeshekoich, like, Yashekoich, your koich should be strong. Thank you for breaking the luchas. Vazak Stav Chsidis. Ah, MSA, MSA. So now that I'll tell you, free Machtem Amale. A whole thing. Yeah, that's the Mimer. The Mimer Lahovin Mipnema, Pesach, the the Makas Pchoris and the Gula was the same day. Hanukkah and put him Mulchame Eintog and the Yom Tov the next day. Mashenk in Pesach. She says, Mitzad Mimale. You have to have two separate days. Mitzat Soiv of Ayr and Choshech could be together. Gleich, yeah. Gleich. Gleich. So somewhere in that way, she will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the Ava of Soiv is the Ava von Bittel. It's the Ava von Bittel, yeah. Azuch nech zich. Azuch nech druch nech. Azuch nech shleimus. Azuch de Rebishter. The what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not Shlemus. I feel a nisht getlich Shlemus. Mamali is nisht yeshes. Mamali is bittel. Oh, but this is the bittel. 
to the Nekude Nalakos was filled on the mensch. The Nekude Nalakos was as Lefi Erech the mensch. Mashenk and Soivev is the Bittl to Alakos Kemoy Shahid, some Emmas. Ah? On, on, on the Levushim, on the Tzimtzum. <laughs> The the um, the the survey is more subconscious, higher conscious. Higher conscious. So there, it's interesting because the one way to tap into it, like we were doing with the nigun, because breathing is something that's conscious and just unconscious. We we breathe automatically. It's unconscious. Very good, beautiful, we breathe, beautiful. We can, we can speed up our breathing, slow it down. Beautiful. So when we get in touch with our breathing, it's a connection between the conscious and the subconscious. Beautiful. Neshama, Neshama, breathing, yeah, yeah. Neshima. So, like, the beautiful. Rab said, Rab said before, like, when there's a stressful time to take a breath, to get beautiful. in touch with Hashem, to do nigunim, sing. Beautiful, thank you. Singing is a thank you, thank thing. you. Singing is such a big thing. Yeah, very big. Imagine how this work decided to experience the life through me. Beautiful, that's it. Hashem decided to experience life through me. So who am I not to? Not to love that. You got to love his experiment. <laughs> That's a beautiful line. That's a beautiful idea. That Hashem decided to experience life through you. So how could you not love it? Beautiful. To think this way is very... It's powerful. Somebody else is. Right. Hashem decided to experience life through him too. Through her too, right. Right. It's a, it's a deeper way. It's just a deeper perspective. It helps you. It aligns your brain to the reality. You don't live in delusions and, and, and cover up. You wake up to reality. But now you have to give me an equation for soiva. That's good for Bamale. Okay, yeah. Let it sit. Let it sit. Still strength. The only, the only one I know that it's the moment where you, you, you lost and you don't know. That's probably the moment where he finds you. Yeah. And that's the only way that maybe so you can can be even experienced by us. Mm -hmm. Can be experienced only by him. Yeah. But it's just in a way like giving a delight to him. Mm -hmm. Not to yourself. Because you, you cannot even. Yeah. 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 Okay. But you sense it. You sense it a little bit, yeah. <laughs> this class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net/donate.